What did you want to do before you became a Beatle? Um, nothing. I didn't want to do anything else. <laughs> Honest. With a staggering 183 million records sold, the Beatles are one of the most popular music groups of all time and certainly changed the world. Paul McCartney played a huge part in their success as the bass guitarist and singer-songwriter. But he wasn't only a talented musician, he also possessed a great love for cars. From sports cars to sedans, he's owned some vehicles that would go on to be timeless classics. With Paul McCartney sharing lead vocal duties with the iconic John Lennon, the Beatles' popularity grew, and so did McCartney's collection. Over the span of his more than six-decade career, he certainly owned enough cars to drive eight days a week. So let's come together and take a look at the vast car collection of the legendary Beatle himself, Paul McCartney. nineteen sixty two Ford console classic considered by Ford to be one of their higher class models launched in May 1961 and built by Ford UK from 1961 to 1963 Ford considered it to be one of their higher class models suitable for the golf club car park they grandly claimed by early August 1962 the Beatles were making enough money that Paul McCartney was able to buy his first car from Blake's Ford dealership in Liverpool. It was, in fact, a slightly larger and longer version of the Anglia that had sold so successfully in the 1950s. And the console stats were far from impressive. Zero to 62 miles per hour was achieved in a turtle's pace of 22.5 seconds, with a top speed of 78 miles per hour. That didn't put Paul off, though. Having been caught speeding twice, McCartney was collared a third time and it cost him his license. However, serendipitously, losing his license contributed to one of the Beatles' biggest hits. A chauffeur hired to shuttle McCartney to Lennon's house for songwriting sessions lamented his long hours on the job, telling McCartney, I've been working eight days a week. And the song's title was born. 1964 Aston Martin DB5. McCartney ordered the DB5 in the summer of 1964, just as his driving ban was coming to an end, and as the Beatles were starting their world tour. He picked it up from his accountant on September 22nd, just five days before the premiere of the movie Goldfinger, in which the DB5 had a starring role. Years later, McCartney's DB5 was fully restored and repainted in James Bond silver birch, and given a mulberry red leather interior. 1965, Mini Cooper S. Deville. In 1965, Beatles manager Brian Epstein ordered four minis for the band, but they were far from ordinary. The cars were modified by British coach building company Harold Radford and Company, who were better known for their work on Bentleys. However, after showing what they could do with the humble mini, Epstein commissioned the company to work their magic on a series of top-spec 1275cc Mini Cooper S models, and McCartney's was a beauty. Finished in California sage green, it came with a Webasto sliding sunroof, a pair of extra front-mounted fog lamps, Aston Martin taillights, and an immaculate wood grain interior. McCartney liked it so much, he featured it in the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour movie. 1966 Aston Martin DB6 Having acquired a taste for Astons a couple of years earlier, McCartney splashed out on a DB6 in 1966. The successor to the DB5, it had improved aerodynamics, was slightly bigger and featured a camback rear end for more luggage space. However, the most famous thing about McCartney's DB6 is that he specified a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder be installed and when he was driving the DB6 on the way to visit Lennon's young son, Julian, a songwriting inspiration struck him, and he came up with the idea for the song, Hey Jules, subsequently amended to Hey Jude, and got it down on tape. 1966, Austin Healey 3000. 
This was the car that Paul McCartney was killed in back in 1966, or at least that was the rumour. The hoax quickly spread about Paul McCartney storming out of the Abbey Road studio during the recording of Sergeant Pepper, jumping into his Austin Healey and speeding off into the night, later fatally crashing his British sports car. Which is all complete nonsense, confirmed by the Beatles press officer, who telephoned Paul's home and Paul answered, explaining that he'd been at home all day. However, due to the nature of rumours, to this day, there's still a sect of people who believe McCartney died that night and was replaced with a Paul McCartney lookalike. 1967 Lamborghini 400 GT 2 plus 2. Only the second car built by the company, the 400 GT was Lamborghini's early attempt at creating a more family-friendly Grand Tourer and featured a rear set of seats while retaining the stunning lines and styling of the original 350. It featured a 4-litre V12 engine and had a top speed of 155 miles per hour, and McCartney loved it as soon as he saw it. Lamborghini would make only 247 cars and only four made it to the UK. It was supplied as a left-hand drive but with a little help from his friends, McCartney had his converted to right-hand drive. Land Rover. An off-roading legend, influenced by Willie's Jeeps in World War II, the first Land Rover arrived in 1948. Customers quickly discovered that this car could take on just about any landscape, creating a high demand for Land Rovers. Over the years, Paul McCartney has owned multiple Land Rovers, one of them he affectionately wrote a song about, named Helen Wheels. 1973 Rolls-Royce Corniche An automotive icon, the Rolls-Royce Corniche was the kind of car that rock stars and royalty loved. The company claimed the name Corniche was chosen for the coach-built models because it symbolises their higher cruising speeds and their ability to cover greater distances with the minimum of fatigue for driver and passengers. McCartney's two-door rolls featured coachwork by Mulliner Park Ward, a 6.75-litre V8 engine and was far more understated than John Lennon's Phantom 5. Then again, Paul didn't have his roller painted to look like a Romani caravan. 1972 Lamborghini S2 Espada Despite owning a 400 GT, McCartney still had a four-seat Lamborghini itch that he needed to scratch, and in 1975 he bought a second-hand series 2 Espada. The Espada came with a 350 horsepower 3.9 litre V12. The fact that it had a red leather interior only added to the allure. However, a few years after buying the Espada, McCartney advertised it for sale, and the would-be buyer arrived at the London address to find the former Beatle ready to do a walk-around. Negotiations were just about to start when McCartney made a confession. Paul explained that at one point his wife, Linda, had forgotten to apply the handbrake and the Lambo had ended up in the family pond. The meeting ended in no sale. 1985, Mercedes-Benz. 500 SEL. The right-hand drive 500 SEL was first registered on June 14, 1985, after being purchased by McCartney's MPL Communications Holding Company. It featured a 5-litre V8 engine, producing around 241 horsepower, and was driven through a 4-speed automatic gearbox. The Mercedes was later restored with a Lorenza sports body kit, nautical blue paintwork, and monoblock-style alloy wheels which were refurbished as part of the restoration work. 1989 Ford Bronco In 2007, McCartney started dating Nancy Shevel, who would become his third wife in 2011. To get to know each other, they went on a long and winding road trip in 2008, exploring Route 66 in a slightly beaten up 1989 Ford Bronco. An iconic American SUV and something of a cult classic. This fourth generation 4x4 four four was a bit understated, but it obviously had something of a magical quality. 
because Paul and Nancy have been together ever since. 2003, Chevrolet C5 Corvette. With a home in Beverly Hills and an American wife, it's no wonder that McCartney decided he needed something suitably stars and stripes for his new environment. Although released in 2003, the year of Chevrolet's 50th anniversary, McCartney has been driving the C5 Corvette since 2005 and is regularly seen driving the rear-wheel drive two-seater with a hefty 5.7-litre V8 under the hood, delivering 345 horsepower. And of course, living in Los Angeles, he had to have a convertible to enjoy the good day sunshine. 2008, Lexus LS 600H. A gift from Lexus, who sponsored his US tour in 2005. When he turned 65, the environmentally conscious McCartney was sent the luxury hybrid all the way from Japan. He was delighted with the car, but less happy that it was delivered by plane, creating a huge carbon footprint, equivalent to driving the car around the world, six times. The LS 600H combined a 5-litre V8 petrol engine with a 221 horsepower electric motor. And while on the surface it doesn't sound all that great, back in 2008, it was a statement of eco-intent. And when McCartney married Nancy in 2011, the bride arrived on time at Westminster Registry office in the hybrid Lexus. 2006 single edition Cadillac CTS. In the summer of 2005, Sir Paul McCartney entered into an agreement with the Cadillac division of General Motors to build a one-of-a-kind vehicle for his personal use. The single edition Cadillac featured a 3.6-litre VVT engine with a five-speed auto-stick transmission and included a long list of luxury features. After Sir Paul McCartney and General Motors built the single edition Cadillac CTS, it was licensed and later donated to the Adopt a Minefield charity, which raises funds for minefield clearance and survivor assistance around the world. Looking back at Paul McCartney's collection, it's clear the man's taste in cars is as good as his taste in music, and some of the vehicles he's owned are certainly as timeless as the music he's made over the years. Paul McCartney is currently 81 years old,